Okay, hi guys, welcome to my new lecture video. So today we're going to talk about polymer structures. We're going to go very briefly and just uh, talk about the basic concepts of polymers. And then of course, at the end of this lecture, I would expect everyone to be able to draw or maybe to sketch some of the types of the polymers or copolymers. So what is a polymer? Polymer is made up of the word poly and mer. Poly stands for many and mer stands for repeat unit. So the blue blocks here represent the repeat unit or the building blocks of the polymer of each of this polymer. We have three different polymers here. We have polyethylene or PE. We have polyvinyl chloride, PVC. And polypropylene, PP. Each with their own respective repeat units. So polymer is formed by the process what we call as polymerization, okay, in which the central carbon, the repeat unit, it actually can connect to similar fragments by just removing the hydrogen atom to form a chain. Okay, let's look at an example here. How does polyethylene form? Polyethylene is formed by the reaction of a catalyst. This is a catalyst and its monomer, which is ethylene, under a certain condition, there will be involvement of active centers. Slowly, it will form a polyethylene. So this is a polymerization process. When all of the repeat units along a chain are of the same type, the resulting polymer is called a homopolymer. So if we have the same repeat units, it's a homopolymer. But if the chains are composed of two or different repeat units, two or different repeat units, we call it as copolymers. We will look into this uh, in detail later. Polymer is actually made up of hydrocarbons, most of them. So hydrocarbons is composed of hydrogen and carbon. So there are two types of hydrocarbons. The first one is saturated hydrocarbons in which each carbon are singly bonded to four other atoms. And another one is unsaturated hydrocarbons in which there are presence of double bond and triple bonds and they are unstable. It can undergo some reactions and they can form new bonds. The bonds can be broken to form a single bond. So this is unsaturated. Okay, next, we're going to look into the four types of polymer structures. We have the first one here. It is called as linear polymers. And then we have branched polymers, cross-link polymers, and network polymers. So if you go along this arrow, it actually shows the direction of increasing strength. This is the strongest polymer, while this is the weakest. And branch and cross links are in between. So for the linear polymer, this is where the repeat units are joined together end to end in single chains. As for the branch polymers, you can see that the side branch chains, they are actually connected to the main one. And for the cross link, the linear chains, the adjacent linear chains, they are actually connected to one another at certain positions by covalent bond. So this chain and this chain, they are connected by a covalent bond. Also this and this, this and this. So for example, cross-link polymers is rubber. This one for the branch, the example is HDPE, which is the high-density polyethylene. And the next one is the network. This is the strongest compared to others. So for the network polymers, it contains around three or more covalent bonds that eventually transform them into three-dimensional networks. So that's why they are termed as network polymers. The example of polymer that have network structures, epoxies. We have polyurethane. Okay, next is polymer size characterization. Polymer can have smaller molecular weight or larger molecular weight. For polymers with smaller molecular weight in which they are short chains, they are usually in the form of liquid or gas. For long chains in which an intermediate molecular weight, they are in the form of waxy solid or soft resin. 
but for high polymer in which they have very large molecular weight it is usually present as solid next is molecular configurations so i'm going to talk about three different configuration here we have the first one isotactic in which all the side chain or the r groups are located on the same side of the chain next is symbiotactic in which the r or the side chain group are located at alternate sides of the chain and for a tactic in which the R groups, they are randomly located in the chain. It can be uh, located a lot in the upper chain or in the lower chain. So it is random. Okay, so this is just isomerism of polymer. We have the cis form and we have the trans form. So you have learned organic chemistry before. Cis form is where all the bulky groups are located on the same side of the chain. While the trans, when all the bulky groups are actually at the opposite sides of the chain. Okay, next is uh, copolymers. So we have four different types of copolymers here. As I mentioned before, copolymers are actually two or more different monomers polymerized together, meaning a polymer that contains two or more different monomers. That is copolymer. If it's just the same monomer, it's a homopolymer. So the first one is random in which the A and B, so this is a monomer A and monomer B, they are randomly vary in chain. So this is random. And the next one is alternating, shown as here, in which the monomer A and B, they are alternating in the polymer chain. For block, the large blocks of monomer A actually alternates with the large blocks of monomer B. So this is B, this is A, this is B, this is A, and it alternates. And then we have the graph in which the chains of B monomer is actually grafted onto the A monomer, uh, the backbone of the A monomer. So this is the B and this is the A. So it's actually grafted to the backbone of the monomer. So these types of copolymers are important and you should be able to draw the random, the alternating, the block, and the graph. You should be able to describe and to compare all the different types of copolymers.